Coach, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good morning. I uh, hope everyone's enjoying your trip here to New Orleans. Uh, today is uh, a fun day. It's fun for our players to have an opportunity to come. And, and uh, first time they've been in the Dome, so a chance to come in here and, and uh, see the Dome and hang out with y'all a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a Thursday for us. That's our mindset as far as you know, getting ready for the game. Uh, so uh, today's a big day. <clears throat> We've had good practices here. And, uh, you know, I like the, the focus and, and the mindset that I've seen in practice as a coach. That's kind of how you, you gauge the readiness of your team. Uh, these guys are, are uh, well prepared for, I think, what they're going to have to uh, compete against uh, Monday night. But uh, today's a big day in our preparation. It's, it's what we call Team Thursday and where we kind of bring it all together. Been prepping for a long time. And, uh, you know, I know the guys are starting to get excited, but really have to start, uh, you know, kind of honing in. And, and uh, each player individually, coaches, everybody really uh, locking in and getting themselves ready to go because uh, this week is moving fast. But uh, except pre really have enjoyed our time. Appreciate the Sugar Bowl folks. Made a great, great experience for us. But, uh, you know, really just ready to go. And I and, uh, can't wait to see this place filled up. and and uh, run out here and compete against uh, the best of the best. <clears throat> Adam Kramer from Bleacher Park. Uh, Coach, you make a, a demanding and at times a, a grueling profession look fun. And, and how are you able to be yourself but also be uh, successful at what you do? Uh, well, um, first of all, I don't know how to be anything but myself. So uh, I, I, I personally don't, don't think you can be very successful um, if you don't just be who you are. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that's how I got here. So I, I've just always kind of embraced, um, you know, who I am. And um, I don't really worry about anything else. Uh, just try to trust my instincts. And, uh, but the, the, to answer the rest of your question, I love what I do. I mean, I don't, I don't think that I, mean, I think when you love what you do, you, it's you're passionate about it and you have fun. And I, I love what I do. I love being with the players, um, and you know I love competing. I love being a part of a team. Uh, I love having an opportunity to help impact and shape young people's lives uh, through the game of football. Um, so. I don't. I don't look at it as a. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I mean, your job is demanding. I mean, I, I mean, I, my job. Everybody's job is demanding. Well, you're shaking your head. Not so. Not so. <clears throat> uh, well, but everybody. Ha you know. I think. I think if you're really passionate about what you do, I mean, your job can be so-called demanding. But I don't. I don't look at a clock. I don't think about a schedule. I just wake up every day and I'm excited to go to work. Um, it, it's something that I that I'm really passionate about, and I and I love where I work. So, you know, I think that uh, I'm very fortunate in that regard, and very blessed to get to do something that I've that I chose to do a long time ago. Uh, I made a decision in 1993, and I was going to coach, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and I've just I've enjoyed every second of it. Dabo Barrett, Sully, CBS Sports. What makes Hunter Renfro so great as a player, and what does he mean to you, uh, to your program? Well, Hunter's, uh, he means a lot to our program. He's, he's, you know, he's a junior now, uh, <laughs> and I know he seems like he's maybe been around here for a long time, but he's a junior, and he's just a great young man. Uh, he's a great leader. He's an inspiration to his teammates. I think he's an inspiration to a lot of people uh, because he's just kind of an ordinary guy. You know, you you. you you know, you meet, most of y'all would walk right by Hunter Renfro and, uh, you know, never think he's Hunter Renfro. Um, but I just, so I think he's a great inspiration from that standpoint in that, you know what, uh, it's not always how you look on the outside. You know, he's not the biggest, obviously. Uh, but you can take what you have and still find a way to be special in your own right. And I think that's what he's done. I mean, he was 155 pounds when he got to Clemson. Weak is a noodle, and uh, you know he's just he's just ta he's ex he's accentuated his strengths. He was always quick, always fast. His his he's got the fastest shuttle on the team. His explosiveness is what makes him special, and then he's brilliant. 
He's a brilliant football player. Played quarterback in high school. So, you know, he wasn't a receiver. So now he's really become a complete player at receiver. He really understands uh, route running and he understands defense. He understands influence. He understands technique and break points and how to set things up. And then he's got outstanding ball skills. Um, and he has this grit uh, and, and will to get the ball, will to get the extra yard, <clears throat> will to get his job done that is, I think, uh, that's what makes him special, and I think that's also what inspires his teammates. And, uh, you know, I think he epitomizes our program. <clears throat> I said that last year. I think uh, the epitome of our program was the last play in the national championship. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have a five-star quarterback throwing the game-winning pass to a walk-on receiver. And uh, I think that's, you know, because for us, we're going to play the best guy. And the best guy is the guy that earns it and does it on the practice field. It's not the highest recruited guy or who other people think should be the guy, it's the guy that earns it. And that's just, uh, that's embraced by everybody in our program. Tommy D. Tuscaloosa hey, Tommy. News. Hey, um, can you share what you remember from 25 years ago on this field? And could you have imagined that 25 years later you would be surrounded by so many of the same people? Yeah, no, no, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's only the good Lord can have a plan like this. I, I would have never, <clears throat> never imagined anything like this. Um, I mean, maybe it, I would imagine maybe being on the Alabama side, uh, you know, because that's kind of how I grew up and spent 13 years in Tuscaloosa and was a part of two Sugar Bowls, uh, but never in my wildest dreams. I mean, I, I as a kid, uh, I had a buddy who that I played baseball with at, at Hoover Ballpark, uh, his parents, uh, they had tickets to go to the Alabama-Arkansas Sugar Bowl. So I was 10 years old. And uh, so I made that trip, first time to come to Louisiana. I was blown away by Bourbon Street. Uh, in fact, my mom gave me a picture at Christmas of me tap dancing with a, with, a, with a street guy that was a tap dancer collecting money. And all these people gather around, and here I am, this 10-year-old tap dancing on Bourbon Street. I never forgot that. Decked out in all my Alabama stuff. And, uh, but I remember coming in here. I don't know, I probably sat up there somewhere uh, and watched the Alabama-Arkansas game. I didn't get to see many Alabama games as a kid, but that was an impactful experience for me. And then 10 years later, 1989, I'm a player at Alabama and I'm, I'm here for the Alabama-Miami game uh, as a freshman. And uh, that was just unbelievable experience. Uh, and then my senior year in 92, we're back here, uh, and uh, you know, I just, it was a magical week, season, everything. Uh, but I do remember the time with my teammates. Uh, the game <clears throat> was a blur. It was almost like it was moving in slow motion. Uh, I mean, I, I was a starter on special teams. I, I, I think the fourth play of the game, I was in the game, and David Palmer, I don't know which way we were going, but David Palmer, we almost took the punt all the way back. And uh, as our first possession offensively was like, I don't know, inside the 10 or something. Uh, ended up having to kick a field goal, but the game was just, it was surreal. Uh, you know, at that time, Alabama folks, remember, it's a long time since Alabama won a national championship, since 79. And so this is 1992. Uh, so it was a big deal, it was the 100th year. And, uh, you know, it was pretty special. Uh, but what I remember about it was a couple things. Um, you know, I'll never forget George Teague's play. I mean, I watched it live, and I still can't believe I watched that. I mean, it's still to this day one of the most unbelievable plays I've ever seen in my life, and uh, it's just crazy. Um, but uh, but it happened, and uh, so I remember that. I remember, I don't know, there was three or four minutes to go in the game, and. And uh, I came out of the game, uh, you know, I, and I, they put some of the other guys in. I was like, well, that's, I'm not, that's it, you know. And I remember standing on the sideline, just literally like a kid, just soaking it in. Like, this is my, I mean, unless the Dallas Cowboys were going to call me, I was probably going to be done. Uh, so I, this is going to be my last play, you know. I played forever, you know, I'd lived my dream. And I just wanted to just kind of soak it in, and I really did. And I, but I remember I, I, I stole a game ball. You know, the managers run the balls in and out. 
So I said, hey, I need one of them. I'm a senior, I'm taking a ball. And I, and I held on to that ball. And uh, it was so funny, because then in the, in the paper, like the next day, uh, you know, back then they actually had, you had to like look at the paper. Uh, there was no internet. You know, if you wanted to see a picture, you had, you had to look at the paper. Um, and then you had to write the guy who did the, you had to write him a note, say, hey, will you send me that picture? Uh, you know, you couldn't just text it or whatever. And, uh, and so the next day in the paper was a big picture and, and it was me and Sherman Williams. And, and I, had, I ran all the way around this stadium high-fiving all the Alabama folks. And it's so funny because that picture, I got, I got that ball locked down. That's the best ball security you've ever seen. I got that ball locked down and I got it to this day. I've kept that ball forever, uh, just sitting in my house. And uh, so I remember that. And then, and then the locker room, the experience in the locker room, the joy of being with your teammates and just knowing that you got it done. That's the greatest moment uh, that you could experience as a player. Because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. That's what everybody's going to remember is those relationships, this, just the togetherness. And that was a special team. And, uh, you know, we had a 25-year reunion this year, <clears throat> and it was special then. Just we got back together, and it was like, it was like yesterday, you know. And uh, so, uh, and I had not been here in 25 years. Last time I had been in this place was 25 years ago until, I don't know if it was March or April, but we came for the Manning Award and literally drove in here onto the field and got out of the car. And, uh, you know, so... 25 years later, we had just won the national championship at Clemson, and first time I had been back in this dome. So it's 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 pretty special uh, to be here. And you know, growing up in Alabama, you, the Sugar Bowl has kind of always been your dream. And uh, certainly as a coach, I didn't know if I'd ever have the opportunity uh, to be you know a coach in the Sugar Bowl. So this is uh, this is a dream come true for me to have the opportunity to to coach in this game. Uh, Gabo, uh, to your left down here. Uh, David Cobb from the Chattanooga Times Free Press. Uh, while we're going back in time a little bit, you were a young assistant when Jeremy Pruitt played at Alabama. What do you remember about Jeremy <coughs> as a player and what's allowed him to climb the ranks of the coaching profession? Yeah, well, Jeremy, uh, he, he transferred in from Middle Tennessee, I believe. And uh, uh, I was. I was. A, I think I was a GA maybe his first year or so, and then I was full-time maybe when he finished it up. And I think he was – I think he might have been a GA for maybe one year, student coach or something. Uh, <clears throat> before he moved on, but uh, you know, he, the biggest thing I would say about Jeremy is a very smart player, and uh, you know, uh, an instinctive player, a uh, tough guy. <clears throat> His dad was a longtime high school coach, and uh, and then Jeremy, I, I knew Jeremy for a long time when he got into high school coaching. Uh, so he was a high school coach for many years, and then went, ended up went, ended up over at Hoover uh, with Rush. So I would see those guys all the time. I had that area. So I would, I, you know, watched him uh, as a as a as a defensive coordinator in high school do an unbelievable job, and then uh, you know have watched him as he's as he moved back to Alabama and then competed against him at Georgia at Florida State. So he's uh, he's a great coach and uh, he's been he's been well groomed and I think he'll do a good job at Tennessee. Darrell Williams, New Orleans Advocate newspaper. <clears throat> Coach, what is your assessment of Alabama tight end uh, Irv Smith Jr. and the threats he may pose? Uh, is he from game? Louisiana? He's from New Orleans. Okay, uh, yeah. Well, he's a good player. I mean, you know, he's just another one of those guys that kind of fits the mold. Uh, big, strong, physical uh, guys. I mean, they got, uh, they've got they been playing a couple guys all year. Uh, but uh, they they all you got to do is watch our games the last couple of years. They like to get the tight end involved. <laughs> especially in, uh, in the action game. But I think he's got a bright future. Uh, but he fits, like I said, fits the mold for what they want in their system. Uh, they want big, strong, physical guys, but guys that can also bring a pre uh, presence in the passing game. Coach Trevor Grove, CUTigers.com. You received a visit from Chad Jasmine yesterday at practice. I was just wondering what it was like to see him again. Did he bring a lot, back a lot of memories from your first season at Clemson? Yeah, it was good to see Chad. Uh, you know, I, I, I've – he, this is the first time we've signed a kid from Louisiana uh, since I've been the head coach and uh, when we got Travis. So we had some fun uh, kind of talking about that. Uh, but, but Chad is, is great. Uh, you know, I still remember, still remember running the trap with him on third and long against Tennessee in the Peach Bowl uh, in 2003. Uh, and uh, he was a tough, hard-nosed football player. 
Um, you know, I was only around him a couple years. You know, when I first came to Clemson, he was finishing up. But uh, I've always, uh, always liked Chad, and uh, it was good to see him yesterday. Coach, uh, over here, <clears throat> you were talking about Coach Pruitt before. You've had pretty impressive stability at the coordinator position, especially through these playoffs the last few years. How do you think that has helped you and uh, helped you establish some chemistry with those coordinators through this process? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's great. You know, I think any time uh, you have continuity with good people, I think that's a, a positive, um, and uh, we, we've had a bunch of good people that have been a part of our organization uh, the last uh, nine years now, and um, you know I'm, I'm very thankful for all of them who've who've come through our program. Uh, you know, m my first staff I had Kevin Steele, uh, who was tremendous. Uh, just did a, I mean he's an unbelievable coach, and uh, was very uh, helpful in, in helping us, you know, uh, establish a, a good foundation at Clemson. And uh, Billy Napier <clears throat> was a young guy, uh, GA, that, that uh, you know, did a really nice job for us now as a head coach. And so I, I value all the people who've come through our organization. And, uh, uh, you know, from time to time, you have some change. And uh, I've always embraced that, too. I mean, last year, we, we didn't lose a coordinator, but, you know, I lost two of the best coaches in college football. Uh, Dan Brooks, who was, man, I mean, he was a rock. Uh, had been my D tackle coach from day one. And Marion Hobby had been my DN's coach for six years. Is now the uh, D line coach with the Jags. And, you know, those two guys were, were, were big shoes to fill. And uh, so, but at the but sometimes you, when you have change, it's, it's fun to be able to bring in. A sometimes different mindset or different energy or whatever and, and so I was able to hire Todd Bates and uh, man Todd's been a great addition uh, he's done an awesome job uh, but from a coordinator standpoint I think the stability has been great but I think also the main thing for me has always been to develop the staff you know just like you develop your players you know you got that freshman that comes in and you know or, or Kelly Bryant and for two years he's just kind of nobody knows who he is and and then, oh my goodness, a, a great player leaves your program, and you, you know what are you going to do? And uh, you know you develop your guys, and if you do a good job of that, then hopefully you can kind of promote from within. Whether it's a next player coming through your program, or it's somebody on your staff. And so you know we we last guy we lost was Chad Morse, and I guess he's been gone three or four years. And um, um, you know I had Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott. Tony played for me. Jeff Scott was a GA for me and, you know, developed those guys. And they were ready uh, for the opportunity. And uh, they've done a phenomenal job um, since then. So, so I think that, uh, again, continuity is great. Uh, but I think the development of everyone on your staff is, is just as important and the chemistry that you have with those guys. Debo, uh, down here, uh, Will Pelagic, South Carolina Radio Network. Uh, update us where you are health-wise and more broadly, how fortunate do you feel to at least go into this game about as healthy as you could expect to be? Uh, well, very fortunate because, you know, I mean, it's, it's always a, a, a tough challenge this time of year uh, because you got a long time to get ready. And, you know, football, <laughs> I mean, especially if you're going to play Alabama, I mean, you can't go out there and play two-hand touch. I mean, it's just yeah, you better – you better bump and grind a little bit or, or you're in trouble. And uh, so it's, you, you just, you just sat, you gotta, you gotta get ready. And uh, the only way I know how to get them ready is to, is to practice, you know, with toughness and physicality and, and good on good. Uh, so you have to balance that along with just your preparation, uh, your, your, your game prep uh, stuff, uh, because it's a long time since you've played. So we're very fortunate uh, to come off of three or plus weeks or whatever we've had uh, to be to be a healthy football team, and uh, so we're we're where we want to be going into it, and uh, you know we I think we've developed some guys because we we had some injuries uh, all year long along the way we've had injuries at linebacker injuries at you know D line <clears throat> a little bit of everywhere, uh, but guys have stepped up and guys have developed in the secondary, uh, so I think we've got a good functional team going into it and, uh, you know, in a good spot health-wise.